And this bus right here, this is actually what they're using as the plane. If we take a walk around, you can see all the first responders. There's still quite a bit of damage out here and it's still pretty dark. So I'm going to try to do my best to show you what I can right now. Over here on the side of me, down on the ground, this is like a piece of siding or the roof. And they're telling people that if they see signs like this one that say road closed, you should not go around these barricades. This morning, Creekwood Park looks entirely different than it did yesterday. It's too dark for me to show you right now, so I took a picture instead. You can see that that water has completely gone down. However, there I have this towel that was in my car, and you can see some of those close snowflakes right on that towel. It's officially been one week since crews closed down a portion of Highway 231, and now the road is closed indefinitely. I've been out here since day one, talking to the Alabama Department of Transportation to find out exactly what it will take to get this road reopened. And they tell me that right now it's simply going to take time. You're absolutely right. I'm bundled up out here because it's freezing out here. But right now the detours they're looking in just a few hours. Former Morgan County Sheriff Anna Franklin will climb these stairs, walk through that door and then head into a courtroom where she will learn her sentence. There's a sign that says reserved for superintendent, but this parking space is vacant. The Cater Fire Marshal tells me that this home on Clearview Street is likely a complete loss. And if I take a step behind the camera, I can show you that you can see from this home all the way from the front straight through the back. I was just shook of like, I, I couldn't believe the house was burning up. I mean, I was like, it couldn't happen, you know? I, I thought. You know, this would never happen. 11 year old Heaven Garth told me she lived in this home on Clearview Street with her mother, but they were staying at her grandmother's house when the fire started. My grandma was saying, The house is burning up, the house is burning up. Heaven, her mother Brooke, and her grandmother made their way to the home, which they found destroyed. When Engine 5 got on scene, they said that the house was fully engulfed and flames were coming through the roof. Heaven and her mom returned to the home after fire crews left, and they're shot by the devastation the fire left behind. Just makes me feel like sad because this was my, you know, this is where I lived, and you know, it's gone. But even though they lost all of their belongings, Heaven tells me she's grateful they weren't home. I was blessed that we wasn't here because if we was here, my mom wouldn't be able to get out, and the the entrance would have been like burning down. We couldn't get out. And I'll be the only survivor probably. And at this time, the Decatur Fire Marshal tells me that they do believe that fire started in a back corner of the home in a utility area. But right now, they are still investigating to try to find exactly what caused that fire to start. Reporting in Decatur, Radnia Ross, Way 31 News. 1.2 seconds is all it took for the Jettison motor to fire up. That's so fast that if you blink, you'll miss it. Wednesday morning, NASA, along with his contractors, gathered at the Redstone Test Center to fire up the Jettison motor for qualification. The Jettison motor is the only one on the Orion launch abort system that fires on every mission. And this is one critical element that takes the first part of the vehicle, the launch abort system, and leaves it on the Earth so that the other aspects of the vehicle can go forward you know, into its deep space. The LAS will protect astronauts if a problem arises during launch by pulling the spacecraft away from a failing rocket. Wednesday's test was all about keeping astronauts safe and getting the motor ready for space flight. Orion's getting really close to getting us forward to the moon so we can get onto Mars. One fascinating aspect of the test is that Wednesday is the last time the Jettison motor will be fired up on Earth. The next time that it is fired is on Artemis 1 next year and it's going to be you know, testing itself in the higher upper parts of the atmosphere and doing its job to remove the uh, launch abort shroud from the uh, crew module. That unmanned mission is scheduled for late 2020, with the manned mission scheduled for 2022. The White House set a goal of sending the first woman and the next man to the moon by 2024. In Huntsville, Bradnia Ross, Way 31 News.